Hello and welcome back to another Warframe video. So today, Zaku's changes have been released, or the first wave of them. There are going to be two of them. Um, a few of his abilities have been changed, but no actual stat changes as I'll get into. Um, I'm going to just work my way through the patch notes. I'll put them up on the screen. And yep, hopefully uh, we shall see some good stuff in the future. But for right now, um, not much has changed majorly. Um, these things should have been with him as he released, but there you go, whatever. He's still good. Um, personally, I haven't used him since he released, and I probably still won't until the next wave of changes come. But besides that, uh, let's get right into it. Okay, so the first change to Zaku is in his passive. Now, his passive gives 25% chance to in ignore incoming damage. Um, and for AoE bombard shots, uh, that wasn't happening. Uh, so what they've done is that they've just made it so you get a 25% damage reduction to AoE explosions, uh, which is fine. That's completely fine. It's a fix, but it's also not really a change, I would say. It's just more like a fix. So you get hit with the bombard explosion now, and you take 25% less damage. Straight, straight up. Okay, so next up is Zaz Whisper, and what they have done is that they've removed the resistance to vo uh, of void damage uh, to clone flesh and fossilized enemies, which is Grenier and Infested. And what basically what they've done is they've, it had a, like an innate resistance and they've removed it. It still has the same issues as I'll get into and show you with my uh, wonderful Kuva Nukor, but I will get into that in a sec. I'm just going to read this off because it's a lot easier for me to read it off and explain after. So, currently, void damage is relatively ineffective against clone flesh and fossilized enemies, as I just said, um, which great, greatly limits the use of Zata's Whisper on grenade and infested enemies. In an effort to give it, and void damage in general, more utility across enemy categories, we are removing this resistance so that it aligns with its neutral effectiveness against other enemy types. It is important to note that Eidolons, Amalgams, and certain bosses will still maintain this resistance. So, what they've done, it's still not very good and I'll explain that I'll show you a quick demonstration what they've done is it removed the resistance that Grenier and Infested have to it now it still sucks <laughs> um, purely purely for the stupidest status effect so basically right I aim at this guy's head with a Kuva Nukor very quick right you know not bad he said now what Zaz Whispers does, it, it gives void damage, but void damage has a stupid status effect where it will put a bubble around them and the bullets is like a mini magnetized. So it will shoot and then the, it will stop me aiming at the head and it's really annoying. So if I cast this, and now I can't hit, now I can't hit him in the head and you can see it's a lot slower. And that's his main issue. Void damage is fine. Great. I like more void damage. You know, that's great. It's just the stupid status effect means I can't aim at the head. And it really, really does stress me out. It's like, I really want to hit him in the head, but I can't. Uh, and that's basically my main issue with Zata's Whisper. That is, that is basically it. Void damage, the, 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 the minus 50% resistance to it. That's great. I still can't aim at the head, so I'd rather just not use it. Moving on. Okay, so next up is Grasp of Lock, uh, a Lok, or Lock, Lok, uh, increasing the speed at which enemies are disarmed so that it occurs earlier in the casting animation, also increasing the casting animation speed overall. Um... So it's a lot faster now. It was a bit slow before and it would probably get you killed because you're standing still while having to cast this stupid thing and it's whatever. Uh, the damage is still the same. Again, once again, there's no stat changes, so there's no actual dis damage change or anything like that. Um, but the, the Grasp of Loke's disarming range has changed from 8 meters to 15, which is excellent. That's really, really nice. Um, but the function of being able to recast means that you can, uh, if you get a bad cast, you can just cast again. But beforehand, you could you, you cast and then you had to stick with whatever you, you cast for like 10, 10, 15 seconds or however long it takes. And basically have to recast after. But now you can recast during, which is excellent. That's a really nice little quality of life change. Once again, it's just quality of life. It's not anything like a buff. More so, it's more like a change. And it's a nice change. I, I, I guess it is a buff, but it's not a buff in the traditional sense. So now I can stand here and probably, yeah, I can take all their weapons. And you can cast up to the, you can cast and get the maximum amount of guns as well, which is really nice. Um, so you can keep casting in game uh, maximum casts. Okay, so moving on to the vast on time. Now, this is the biggest change for me personally. I think this is a really, really good change. Um, this is straight up like a really nice buff. Um, not numbers wise, but basically what they've done is that they've removed the energy drain on your ultimate, which means that it's only now a duration, which makes him less of a hungry frame. He's still a really, really energy dependent frame. So if you don't have that arcane energize or, um, Zeneric on your operator, then, uh, good luck using him because he, he eats energy alive. 
Um, so removing the energy drain and keeping it duration based ability only, which is really, really nice. So you cast this now and you're in your skeleton form, which gives you obviously that 75% extra damage reduction. Um, it's now just duration. So there's no drain to your energy, which is really, really nice. I still think flow is a really good idea on him because you're going to be using a lot of casting, a lot of energy and yeah. The second thing that they've changed to Vast on Time is the fact that it will freeze all of your other abilities in time whilst you cast your ultimate. And what I mean by that is if I was to cast my first ability, which is Zatter's Whisper, I get 45 seconds of extra void damage. Yippee. Um, and then if I was to cast my ultimate, it's now stuck in time. So now it's 39 seconds. It's not going down. And that duration um, starts again once my ultimate is finished. So I get 25 seconds on my ultimate. And then once that has ended, the 39 seconds begins to go down again until I recast my ultimate, which is really, really nice. This, again, ties in with the whole energy drain thing because he was a super energy hungry frame. And they've sort of fixed that now with this, this cool thing. And it's straight up a nice little buff. You know, you're, you're able to cast a little bit more. And let's go try it out on gaze. So if I was to gaze this guy, he's now gazed. I get 20 seconds on that if I cast my ultimate. It's now stuck at 17 seconds, and you can see on the right. So I've got, you know, like 45, 50 seconds of gaze. And I, that is a nice a nice amount of duration uh, for this huge area of complete 100% armor strip, which is very, very nice. And that's basically what the ultimate does. That's what they've changed to it. And that's basically what they've done in the entirety of the first wave of changes. Now, what I will, note, what I will say is there are no actual stat changes. There are no... Um, Changes in like the way that the abilities scale, um, besides obviously grasp of lock and its and its synergy with um, deny, uh, you get like a damage multiply. Besides that, there's no actual changes, so there's no there's no change for the build because you still need to build the same. So I have 205 strength, obviously, to get myself to the 100% armor strip, which is glorious. I've got okay efficiency. Um, but again, this is completely fine now because of the fact that you your your abilities last like 30 seconds longer. You don't need to cast nearly as much. Um, my range obviously is the same because I want a big, not wide radius. And my duration, which can be improved. Um, you can trade some range and efficiency for a e bit of extra duration. But I like I like this build as, as, as it is. I like the fat range I get for the uh, huge armor strip area. Um, plus the extra duration I get anyway through Vast on Time. It doesn't really matter now that I don't have as much duration. But besides that, the build hasn't changed. I haven't needed to change it because there's no been at, like major stat changes. And that's basically all of the changes to Zaku. If I've missed something or you found something better uh, for a build, please just let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. And I will be back with another video very soon. Peace.